Hello, Best Time Network. It's Holly, and I'm joined by a special guest who did not fancy napping all the way through recording today. So she's a little bit confused. She's looking a little bit judgmental right now, but she's here to talk to us about all we need to know about medical. So, as you know, West Ham have been preparing for the Lewis GMA Medical as we close in on the £20 million signing, which will mark the first of the Julian Lopetegui era as long as all goes through. But I've seen a fair few questions on social media asking why we want to take players over to England to do this, as well as what a player needs to do to pass a medical so we thought we would do a video sorry if you see a few funny faces um running through everything that you actually need to know about medical so let's jump straight into it <laughs> Yes, it's Tuesday and today, sorry, she's looking very, very intently at the screen. Today marks the day Lewis Guillermo is set to have his medical at West Ham and we have seen a lot of rumours and a lot of stories about it. But first of all, people have been asking why he's coming to England for his medical and questioning whether we could do it in Brazil to speed things up. Now, the challenge with this is that every single club wants to do it in their own way. They want their own team of experts, they want their own equipment so that they can be confident that the player passes the medical in the way that they are happy with. Now, we We've seen that players like Ben Rama that have had issues flagged during medicals, it can cause delays um, and more tests have to be done with the club basically working out whether they're then happy to take the risk should this happen based on the advice that they've been given. So this is why clubs then want to take the player over so that they can do everything themselves. Now, it's all about having everything done to the standards that you want so that you're confident with the price tag that you're paying and the risk that you're taking on for that player that you are linked with. So if we had it done in Brazil, we would have had to have taken the guidance of the best sort of teams, medical teams out there, the best equipment we would have either have had to have sourced out there or tried to get our equipment out there. So it all just adds a lot more risk to it. And if you were in a rush, you could push it through and travel to the player. But at the start of the transfer window, when you've got so much time, you'd basically have to be mad to not put them through the most rigorous medical possible because you want to spot everything that's going to matter for you. And it's really important that we, we protect ourselves and we do a really thorough medical because moving into a higher intensity league, um, as well as being young and stepping into a more physical game, the risk of injury is higher. So Dr. Rajpal Bra actually came out and spoke about this earlier in the week, basically highlighting that the risk will be highest for Guillermo while he adapts. But he said that given his previous medical history, there is no cause for concern. So that's obviously good to hear. But then you have the question of what they actually test for in a medical. So the answer is a lot. Everything you test for is to understand how they would cope on a pitch, how they would cope off the pitch and how they would compare to the standards that you require at the club for a player. So before it even begins, they do pre-medical assessments. They review the player's history. They look at previous injuries. They look at any ongoing medical conditions as well as details about blood tests, results um, like height, weight, body composition. All these things get looked at and then once you have the player at the medical they have the cardiac screening so this is for mainly the player's safety on the pitch designed to pick up any abnormalities with the heart which we have seen obviously it doesn't always get picked up we've seen it in um, professional football where this has happened before but they try and flag any of these these issues before they bring players into a new league or into a new club. Next, they look at a player's joint mobility, so muscle strength and stability as well. They use x-rays, they use MRIs to look at any more findings in detail. Um, movement screen screenings. So what they do is they watch a player's movement patterns, coordination and balance, and they look for anything which they think could increase the risk of injury should they sign. Then they do strength testing, so they understand muscle strength in different situations, and they look at how different muscle groups perform together. Sorry, Mia looks absolutely baffled and it keeps making me giggle. Um, and they look at muscular strength at different speeds as well, understanding basically how they would perform in different settings. Then the results of this are used to shape the player's strength and conditioning programs. They do VO2 max testing, which I'm sure some of you will have seen. There's actually some quite interesting videos of regular people being put through their paces with this. So I definitely recommend watching that. Um, and they check the player's maximum oxygen output uptake um, in those. And then this is normally done on a treadmill or an exercise bike. They basically ramp up the intensity until they can't go on any longer. And the goal of this is to test their fitness levels, understand how they compare to other players' fitness and give more of an insight into their endurance, which they can obviously then use to tailor to work out whether someone's ready to play at full 90 or whether they need a lot of work doing. 
And then body composition is measured to understand body fat percentage, muscle mass, bone mass, overall body composition. And finally, there is a psychological evaluation working out how the player can handle the pressures that come with playing professional football, as well as working out any basically any mental training strategies, I believe they're called, that they can help the player with. And then once those are done, the medical team made up of physios, doctors and any other specialists that they have, they look at the results and give an evaluation of all the findings. This is almost like a report that gets given to the club and tells you whether they think there's any cause for concern, whether they think a player is literally ready to hit the ground running, whether they think they need more work in certain areas. They look at concerns and risks and they give recommendations for treatment, rehab and training to basically give them the best chance of success should the club choose to sign them and obviously flagging any concerns that they have. But it's quite rare, I think, that that you actually have concerns that completely put a club off. Usually, usually, like with Ben Rama, there'll be something that flags and then you work out whether or not you're happy to take that risk on. So if they're already playing professional football, it's quite unlikely that they'll, they'll spot something absolutely horrendous that would completely scare a club off. So there you have it. As you can see, there are quite a few steps which have to take place. And ideally, you want these to be as thorough as possible so you're not missing anything and um, obviously wasting money, but also putting the player at risk. And that's... That's your that's your little overview of to answer the question of why we're bringing Guillermo to England for his medical rather than doing it out there, um, and what a medical actually entails. Lots of medical things, basically. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new around here, make sure you've subscribed. Drop us a comment with your thoughts on Guillermo being so close to signing. Oh, we've just been sick. This is not going well, is it? <laughs> on Guillermo signing for West Ham. And until next time, have a brilliant day. A couple of new irons from me and from Mia. Bye bye.